Hello and welcome to the S3 hosting for beginners video course. You've made a smart choice on deciding to get access to this course so that you can begin to set up your Amazon S3 account and begin to upload big video files, audio files, or even images or any file that you want to upload to your account and save a lot of money. So my goal and the purpose of this video course is to get you to that point. So I'm going to keep this simple, straightforward, and to the point. So first things first, what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of the video course so you know exactly what to expect. And that way you'll see the step-by-step -step process and you'll be able to implement it at a faster rate. So obviously this is video number one, which is the introduction and quick overview. Video number two, I'm going to talk about calculating your costs. It's good to have an idea of your numbers and potential budgeting so that you can kind of put money aside for your monthly and yearly budget. Now I will say with Amazon S3, you're going to save a lot of money. In fact, when we took the move from a dedicated $300 per month server to Amazon S3, we now pay about $30 a month. And we're utilizing a good amount of bandwidth, which you'll see more in video number two, which is going to be an eye opening experience. So video number three, we're going to talk about what you need. So there are a few things you need before you can get started. Video number four, we'll talk about the recommended softwares and why video number five will connect to S3 utilizing those softwares. We'll create buckets and folders in video number six. Video number seven is going to be about protecting your Amazon bucket by preventing unauthorized access. So a lot of people are unaware of this, but they create an Amazon bucket. They set everything up on their download page and people begin to download the files. That's great and all, but a lot of people forget to protect the bucket. So what ends up happening is people share those links or they put it on their own site and then guess what? They're utilizing bandwidth that you have to pay for. So this is a very important step and I'm going to show you how to do it right. Video number eight, we're going to talk about transferring files from the PC or your Mac to your Amazon S3 account. And of course, last but not least video number nine, we're going to talk about getting the URL to each file. So this is crucial, especially when you begin to build out your download pages, you need to have the direct link, right? So what I want to do right now is just to create a flow chart so that you can visually see what is happening as far as integrating your existing web hosting account with Amazon S3. So I want to make sure that you understand that you're not replacing your web hosting account. But rather what you can do is you can size it down while using Amazon S3. So right now you have a web hosting account, right? And some of you could be paying $10, $20 a month. You could have your virtual private server and you could be paying $130 a month, or you could have your dedicated server and eventually hit that two to $300 per month. Now by using Amazon, S3, what it does is it alleviates the burden of having to host tons of heavy duty files like video files, audio files, and images. So what ends up happening is yes, your web hosting account works now and you could be paying a low fee, but over time, what's going to happen is as your company grows or as your website grows, you'll get more and more visitors, right? So the more visitors you get, the heavier it of the burden it has on that particular web hosting account or server. And then what will happen is the web hosting company just asks you to, they'll say something like, well, you're, you're maxing out your account. So you're going to need to upgrade to the next level, the next level. And ultimately you're going to find yourself paying for a dedicated server. Now what Amazon S3 allows you to do is is allows you to grow on a long-term basis without having that burden. So you can essentially get a cheap virtual private server for $25 
and host your domain here. And then place all the images, videos, audio files, just or just big files that people are going to download or utilize your bandwidth. And you can place them on the Amazon S3 account. So what that does is it alleviates you from having to actually step up to the next level, to the next level and so forth. So actually what happened was we had a dedicated server and we actually moved down to a cheap $50 per month virtual private server. So now what we do is we use that as a virtual private server, meaning that what other people do does not impact our actual account. So now we have a cheap web hosting account and we link the images, the videos, the audio, and the big files over here. Because with Amazon, what's nice about this is you could have thousands of people per day accessing the Amazon S3 servers and it's not going to phase them. It's not going to crash your account or anything. The people that are visiting here they are going to just go to your basic yourdomain.com. They might be visiting your WordPress site, but all the images are in videos and everything are over here. Now you could put the images here and just stick the big videos, audios, or big files over here. That's something that we did during product launches. For example, is we found that a spike of traffic can crash your whole server, but by placing before Amazon S3 was available, we would place the images, videos, and audios, and big files on a different server. And that's how we would combat this whole situation. So I just want to make that clear that you understand that this doesn't necessarily replace this. You still have the web hosting account. You still have WordPress on this account. You can still have images, but the whole goal is to alleviate that burden. All right. So now that you understand how it works, uh, let's move on to the next videos and I'm going to show you how to actually get this done. So with that said, let's just jump straight in and go into video number two and we'll talk about calculating your costs. So you know exactly what to put aside as far as your budget. Hello and welcome back to video number two, which is calculating your costs for your monthly budget and potentially your yearly budget. Okay, so now what we want to do is you want to head on over to calculator.s3.amazonaws.com slash index.html. So once you enter that, you will be sent to this page and we can begin to budget your monthly and yearly costs. Now, in order to do this, we want to go to the left hand side and click on Amazon S3. Now it's going to ask you to choose your region. What the region is, is basically you're going to have the option when you create your buckets to specify a region. Now I would advise you to pick a region where most of your audience is going to be. So if, if I feel like, okay, most of my customers or prospects are going to be in the United States, I might want to choose something in the United States here. So I'm just going to choose this one here. Now standard storage is merely the amount of stores that you expect to use in a month. So in other words, how much are you going to upload? Now, realistically, most of you are probably going to upload max a couple gigs. Now, for those of you who are heavy users, you might say a max of a hundred gigabytes. Now imagine this, your web hosting company, most of them, in order to upload like a hundred gigs, you're at least paying 50 to hundred dollars per month. Now look at this. If I scroll up here, you can see it automatically shows you your estimated monthly bill. You only have to pay $2. So imagine the possibilities. Now let's talk about bandwidth, which is basically if you upload a hundred gigabytes of video files, audio files, really large files, and people are actually watching these videos, listening to these audio files. Basically, if you have a file or a video file that's, let's say, for example, 20 megabytes, if it's 20 megabytes, then you send, let's say, 100 visitors who 
those 100 people watch that one video, then it's 100 times 20, which is 2,000, which is 2,000 megabytes, which is basically two gigs. So in this case, I just want to show you this. We have data transfer out, data transfer in. So these two are the ones that you will primarily be looking at. So let's try to max it out. Let's say, for example, that we have 500 gigs per month data transfer out and 500 gigs in. How much is that going to cost me? $55 per month, which is not a lot of money compared to web hosting companies that usually promise you unlimited plans. And realistically, there is no unlimited plan. So let's max it out and let's just say 500 gigs out and 500 gigs in. Now I will be honest, most of you will never really reach even 300 gigs in and out. So if that's the case, then you're paying only $37 per month. You see, so for example, I have about, about 100 gigabytes worth of storage space and I'm using about 300 to 500 gigs in and out. And this considerably is, I've got thousands and thousands of people coming to the site, watching videos at all times. So unless you're at that point, you're not even going to have to pay anywhere close to $27. So I would say the majority of you, if you're just getting started, or even if you are a heavy user and you do have thousands of people visiting your site, you're more likely to be about in the range of 150. So even that case, you have a $14 monthly bill. So $14 monthly bill that times 12, we'll just do 15. It's about $180. So that is a lot better and considerably it's a lot faster compared to web hosting companies. And we've tested this over the years and found that Amazon S3 is just saves you a lot of money and headache in the long term. So this allows you to have a basic web hosting account where you can put your website on it, but then put all the heavy files like the images and the videos and the audio files and the big, big files on Amazon S3. So now that you know how to budget, let's move on to the next video. Welcome to video number three. We're going to discuss what you need before you can get started. So what you need to go ahead and do is open up your internet browser, go to the website, aws.amazon.com slash S3. That's aws.amazon.com slash S3. And you're going to see this particular Amazon S3 site. It's also known as Amazon simple storage service. Same thing as S3. So what you need to go ahead and do is if you don't have an AWS account, go ahead, click create an AWS account. And then next you need to log into your account. And if you go to the billing dashboard right here, you go down to payment methods. What you need to do is you need to add a credit card for this to work. So go ahead and do that now. And in the next video, we'll discuss different recommended softwares that you can use. Welcome back. This is video number four. We're going to talk about recommended softwares and why we recommend each one. So back in the day before a lot of these softwares evolved, you had to go to Amazon. You had to mess with all the technical buckets and you would have to figure out all the technical documentation. But now, because there are softwares that all you pretty much have to do is get your secret and access ID connected to your Amazon account and to the software, the system will actually create the buckets for you within the program itself, which will walk you through step by step so you won't get lost. But with that said, Cloudberry Lab is one of the ones that we recommend and that we will be using in this particular video course. Now to get here, you go to cloudberrylab.com. You click on products and you click on Amazon S3. 
Now, what we like about Cloudberry is they offer you a lot of good educational information. So beyond this video course, you can learn a lot and a lot of updated materials such as I'll show you later how you can get access to access policies or in other words, ways to protect your Amazon buckets. But beyond that, Cloudberry also allows you to connect to FTP or your website and other file hosting servers. So there is actually a free version which you can download. And then of course they have a pro version. So if you just want to start out with the free version first, and then you feel like you can upgrade to the pro version and you want to upload files at a faster rate, you can do that. The second software is S3 and same goes for that. It's only compatible with windows clients. Now the S3 browser, it also has a free version, which you can download. A lot of them are very, very similar, but produce the same results. Now, if you use a Mac computer, so another software that we recommend is cyberduck.io. That's cyberduck.io. And when you go to the site, as you can see, this is compatible with FTP S3. As you can see, it is compatible with both Windows and Mac. So I just wanted to show you this if you are a Mac user. Now, another option that you can take is by using the S3 Fox, which is a plugin for Firefox. So to get here, basically search for S3 Fox Firefox plugin, and you'll go here. Now, while this does allow you to connect and upload files for free, the problem with this is it doesn't have as many features as S3 browser Cloudberry or the other programs have. So just keep that in mind when you are going through and deciding on which software is best for you. Hello and welcome to video number five. We're going to discuss how to connect your software to your S3 account so you can begin to upload files. Okay. So the step number one consists of you opening up your Cloudberry S3 or S3 browser or even the cyber duck. If you're using a Mac computer, most of them are very, very similar. Now in Cloudberry, we're using this because we really like Cloudberry. We've used other softwares before and we just like Cloudberry. So really it comes down to your preference. Now they're all the same. Now with Cloudberry, what you can do is on the left hand side, you're going to see source. So under source, it says my computer. So we click this drop down menu and we click on new storage account. Now with Cloudberry, it gives you a ton of different options. Now you don't really need most of these options, but it gives you the option to connect to your website FTP. And what you can do is you can actually transfer files from your FTP or your website to Amazon S3. So that's a nice thing. If you want to transfer files from here to here or from your computer to Amazon S3, you have the option to do that. So what we need to do is we need to create an Amazon S3 storage account. So we click this, double click it. Now it's going to ask you for the display name, which is basically, it tells you what the account is and that's just for you. Next it's going to ask you to enter your access and secret keys. And these are two items that you can only get from your Amazon account. Now the same with S3 Fox or S3 browser or CyberDoc. They're all going to ask you for the access key and secret key. What's nice about this is once you get the key, it'll connect to the system and you don't need to worry about creating buckets within the Amazon S3 dashboard, which is something that you used to do. So you can do everything within the program itself. So now what I want to do is step two is to show you where to get these access and secret keys. Now, assuming that you have created the Amazon AWS account, what you need to do next is after you have added your credit card is up at the top, click on your account name and click on my security 
credentials. So at this point, it's going to forward you to this particular page. It's going to say you're accessing the security credentials for your AWS account. So click continue. And then next, we need to go under this item here, access keys. And then of course, you're going to see create access key. Now keep in mind that you can only have two active access key IDs. You cannot have more. So if you need to make more inactive, you just click on make inactive. Once you click on create new access key, it'll create a brand new access key and it'll create those two keys that you need. So once you have those two keys, all you have to do is enter the access key in here, secret key in here, and that's it. And then you're good to go. Once you're done with that, you click on OK, and then you will have an account created within here. So now all you need to do is simply select that particular account, and that's all you have to do right now. Hello, and welcome to video number six, Buckets and Folders. Now that you have connected to your S3 account, what we need to do now is create buckets, and within that bucket, we need to create folders so then you can actually upload files to those folders. So starting where we left off in the previous video, then you should see a list of buckets underneath. Or if you've created a brand new account, then of course you will not have any buckets. To create a buckets, it's very, very easy. And think of buckets kind of like either they are separate companies, separate departments, they're not necessarily folders because you have folders within that particular bucket. So what I like to do is I like to create a bucket for each new domain name. So that way I can segment them. I can separate things and I know, okay, this file is connected to this website. Now you can separate it however you wish and create as many buckets as you want. But I just wanted to kind of show you what we do. So, Assuming you have clicked the source, you've chosen your Amazon S3 main account, you will see the buckets here. Now, as you can see, I have four buckets, but within those buckets, I've got a lot of files within there. Now to create a bucket, it's easy. All you have to do is click on the blue square icon. Then what we do is we create a bucket name and keep in mind that you want to name it using a naming convention so that you know what that bucket is. Now, the next thing is it's going to ask you for your bucket location, meaning are you going to upload the files to a server within a certain region like Singapore, Sydney, Australia, Tokyo, Seoul, Korea, Europe, or the US. Now, before you decide on choosing what bucket, I know most of people will choose a bucket that is closest to them. Instead, I recommend that you choose a bucket that is closer to the majority of your audience. So yes, if you're in the US and most of your audience is within the US, then choose that bucket. If you find that you're in Sydney, Australia, but most of your audience is within the US, then I recommend choosing that. Now, the next thing it's going to ask you for storage class, but I would leave it at standard and I'll click OK. So now it's created the bucket so we can see it is test domain DL. I'm going to double click that. And there we go. Now I can create folders as you can see here. So I can click new folder. We can create maybe videos folder create a audios folder and create an images folder and whatever folders that you decide to create. And then of course you can go within the folder and then you can upload the files. Now I'm going to show you how to upload and transfer files and the specific settings that I have it set on and all of that in the future videos. But I wanted to keep it simple and show you how to create a bucket. So you see back in the day, you would have to log in the Amazon dashboard and create a bucket there. But now that you have the program, which is what I highly recommend that you do, 
Now you can create all the buckets inside the program and you're good to go. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Welcome to video number seven, prevent unauthorized access. In this particular video, we are going to discuss how to protect your Amazon bucket so that other people cannot share the links to their friends and to other sites. And thereby what happens is you end up paying for people pirating your links. We have seen other people forget this crucial step and end up paying a lot of money in Amazon S3 a cost. Now, of course, while the costs are low, you're still paying for other people hot linking to you. So I'm going to teach you a specific way of developing an Amazon access policy that tells the bucket and says to it, unless somebody comes from a specific site, which is your site, deny them access. So let me go ahead and do that now. So to create a bucket policy, all you have to do is locate your bucket. So in this case, it's going to be test domain DL. I'm going to right click and click on bucket policy. Now this is going to kind of look like code and it's going to look complex and overwhelming. And that's a fact. It is true. But since most of you are newbies, I'm going to show you how to create a bucket policy by getting a swipe file from Cloudberry. Now, in this case, I'm going to go back to Cloudberry. So I recommend that you go to cloudberrylab.com. They're always coming out with the latest, greatest updates. And that's really why I like Cloudberry. But if you go to their blog and you look for their search here and you type in Amazon S3 hot linking. So Amazon S3 HOT linking. You go here and you do a search, they'll actually give you the hot linking script. So click here and I'm going to show you how to customize the script in a minute. So you don't need to know programming or anything like that. You don't have to read any of this. In fact, if you read this, it might be overwhelming. So just follow me along. You're going to scroll down and you're going to find this script right here. So we're going to highlight everything in blue. So from here, all the way up here. So we're going to highlight that. You're going to click copy and then we're going to transfer it over here. Now, before we do that, I want to put this in Microsoft word and we're going to make the size bigger and we're going to customize the script. I'm going to show you how, and then we'll copy that finalized code over to the Cloudberry system. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it here. We're going to make it big enough so that you can see it where it says my bucket. You can leave the slash, but you're going to replace my bucket with the bucket name. So in this case, my bucket name is test domain DL. That's all you have to do. And we say allow get request referred by blah. So all this is right here is it's a note to you to tell you that you're going to allow requests referred by a specific domain. So you're going to put that your domain.com. And then next where it says AWS refer, what this means is that in this case, cloudberry.com. So you're telling the system that whatever files I upload into this bucket only and only if somebody comes from cloudberry.com or if they click on a downloadable file that is hosted, let's say for example, on a WordPress site on cloudberrylab.com, then it'll work. So in other words, if somebody tries to steal your download page or your download links, or they try to share it with somebody else, it's not going to work. Or they're going to use a download manager. It's not going to work. So basically you're going to enter your domain.com here. Now it's going to show you other sites here, but what I recommend that you do is you do, it says HTTPS. So unless you have a secure SSL certificate, you don't need the 
HTTPS. But if you want to make it so that in the future, if you add it in the future, then you could leave it as is. So you could put your domain.com, whatever that is, just replace this one here. So this one here is the regular HTTP without the www. So you could put your domain Dot com. So just a different variation of it. And then of course you don't need this. Now the comma is only here if you want to add new domains. So in other words, if you wanted to add, let's say your domain.net, and then you want to add an additional one, you got to put a comma in between. Now, you just saw how it tried to underline it, right? So that's why we try to use Notepad. I wanted to use Microsoft Word because I wanted to show you how to do this. And then you put apostrophe and another apostrophe, and then you put whatever you need to put inside. So basically you're saying anytime this domain, this domain, this domain, or this domain, traffic comes from that or the download page is located on that, it will work. If it's not, it will not work. So that's basically all it means. So now what you need to do is copy this. I'm not going to save. I'm actually going to copy it into notepad because I want to remove any type of formatting. And this is where I normally edit as well. I normally do it in here. But once you're done with that, all we have to do is copy this into the policy script. So we can actually delete anything that's in here. And then we're going to paste that in here. We're going to click apply. And of course it says policy contains invalid domain. So I added real live domains and it works. So now I got to click OK and that's it. And like I said, the newbie way, if you ever forget or you don't have access to Cloudberry whenever you're watching this video, simply go to google.com, look for an S3 bucket policy, make sure the word hot linking is in it, and you'll find a lot of ones here. And all you do is customize it and you're good to go. Now that you have protected your Amazon bucket in video number seven, we're going to talk about in video number eight, how to transfer the files from your PC or Mac to your Amazon account. Now, before we transfer files to your Amazon S3 account, I want to show you some settings within the Cloudberry S3 Explorer program that I highly recommend. So if you go up at the top, you click on tools, you click on options, and what we want to do is we want to go straight to the bandwidth tab. Now, this is something that we encountered and this is something that you might want to tweak. And this allows you to control how much of your internet connection is being used to upload your files. Now, if it is set at unlimited, obviously it will try to upload as fast as it can. But in doing so, it will actually utilize the majority of your internet connection. So if you're going to want to upload, but you also want to use the internet and you want to work on other things on your business, then you do not want to select the unlimited. Otherwise, what will happen is it will max out and then it won't allow you to actually use the internet. So what you want to do is you want to figure out how much does it normally upload max. So let's say for example, that your internet uploads at a rate of 1000 kilobytes per second. If that's the case, then I would highly recommend that you change the upload speed to 750. Unless of course you really want to get the files uploaded and you're going to walk away from the internet. So just keep that in mind that that's something that we encountered. And if you want to use the internet, select that. Same with download speed, if your max is a thousand, you want to select something lower than that. All right. So the next thing you want to do is you want to click on S3 multi-part upload. Now by default, what it's going to do is when you upload, say for example, a 200 megabyte file, 
obviously, typically, that's going to take a lot of time. But what's nice about Cloudberry Explorer, and I know S3 Browser also does this, but what's nice about this particular program is it uploads it in chunks and parallel threads. So what that means is going to take that 200 megabyte file, let's say it's a zip file, it's going to split it up into chunks, let's say 10 different chunks, and then it's going to upload those chunks. Now by doing so, it's going to actually speed the process up. You can also specify what file portion that you want. So obviously the smaller the file, the more chunks that it's going to split up. So if you're uploading a 500 megabyte file and it is 10 megabytes each, that's going to be 50 files that it's going to be uploading. But it's going to be splitting it up so that it speeds up the process. Now, when it actually gets on to the S3 server, it's going to be one file. So you don't have to worry about, is it going to split it up into 50 different files and that's going to create a mess? No, it's actually doing it within the system. And then once it gets on to your S3 account, it'll just be one file. So that's not something you have to worry about. But as you can see, you can split it up between five megabytes and five gigabytes. So I would make sure that this is set. Click apply when you're ready. I'm not going to click that since I already have my settings set and we are good to go. Now we can upload the files. The left hand side is going to be either your computer. So you're going to click on source and choose your computer. You're going to find the location of your files and that's going to be on the left hand side. The right hand side is going to be your Amazon S3 account. Now you can switch them. They can be over here and there, but I like to keep it on the left. And I think from the left, I'm going to move to the right. So as you can see here, we left it off where we did earlier. And this is my account and I am under the test domain DL bucket and we can see these particular folders now i've got an images folder and these are images over here and i'm going to transfer these files over to here so you can either select them by select them individually or if you want to highlight a certain amount you can click the shift button and you can go from here to here or another thing is you can use the control or command key you can select this one and let's say you only want this one and this one. So that's how to select the files. Now, of course, when you want to transfer them, you simply click left on your mouse and you click it. You don't let it go yet. You drag it over here and then you let it go. And then it says, do you really want to copy these files? Yes, I do. And as you can see, the process is, is being uploaded. So that's how fast this system is in uploading it. I'm using the multi-part upload option. And as you, you saw within less than a second, we uploaded all of these images. So that's how easy it is to upload from the left to the right. Now, let's say for example, that I want to transfer files from the actual S3 account back to my computer. By doing so, I can select a certain amount here and I can move it over here and then click yes. Now you can also change the source so that it is your website. So you could click here, you could choose your website. Obviously you need to configure all that, but you can select that so you can transfer files from your website directly to your Amazon bucket. So that's another option that you can take. Now, obviously there are other options within the Cloudberry system. I'm not going to go over them because you don't really need them for this purpose. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to get the URL to these files. So you're going to need the URL in order to link to them via your website. Welcome to video number nine, getting URLs to each file. Okay. So in the previous video, we showed you how to transfer files to your Amazon S3 account. Now I want to show you how to get the URL so that you can go into your WordPress site or your HTML site and you can link the images or you can link to your zip files or your video files or whatever files that you might have just uploaded. 
To do so, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is inside of the folder that you just uploaded to in your Amazon S3 account, click on that, or you can click on a bunch at a time. You can do that as well. But once you have decided to click on those, you right click, and then you go to web URL. So you click that and it's going to give you a list of all the URLs. Now you can just click copy to clipboard. And if I open it up in a notepad, let's say for example, I can paste them in here. So that's the nice thing about the Cloudberry is it allows you to select all the URLs at one given time. Now, another thing I can do is of course, select the individual URL, click on web URL and then copy to clipboard or I can open the link right here. But as you know, with the access policy that we created in the, in the previous videos, this will not work because it'll only work if it detects if it is coming from a specific website. So I'm gonna copy this to the clipboard. I'm gonna go over here and I can just copy it here. And that's as simple and easy as it gets. You can take this URL, of course, you can go to your WordPress site. You can enter it into as a link. If it's a zip file, you can create a link. You create a download page using an HTML editor or WordPress. And that's how easy it is. So now that you understand how to create a bucket, how to connect everything, how to upload the files from this point on, you're good to go. So again, congratulations for reaching the end of this video course.